Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, we'll be talking about Lopital's rule. And Lopital's rule is one of those rules where once you know it, it makes a lot of questions a lot easier to kind of deal with in terms of limits. So what exactly is Lopital's rule? Well, it's a rule that makes limits a little bit easier to work with depending on what kind of limit you, you have. So a little bit of history just for your side knowledge. L'Hopital wasn't actually the one who came up with the rule, kind of like how the Pythagorean theorem wasn't necessarily found by Pythagoras. L'Hopital was actually, well, what happened was Bernoulli was the one who came up with the rule initially, and then L'Hopital took all the credit for it by saying that, okay, well, I'm going to tutor, but if you're gonna, but if I'm gonna tutor, um, then what's gonna happen is that any discovery that you make, uh, I'm gonna take credit for it. So Bernoulli was the one who initially came up with uh, the idea, but because L'Hopital was allowed to take all the credit for Bernoulli's work, the rule itself is associated with his name. But I mean, uh, as most things goes in history, it's kind of shrouded in controversy and stuff. So fun fact about mathematics, as a kind of a side note. That aside, what exactly is this rule? So I'll give a formal definition of the L'Hopital's rule first, using some language and mathematics and whatnot. Then I'll, then I'll talk about like the actual definition in more simple terms. And then I'll actually give a proof of why L'Hopital's rule works in the first place. As for examples, I'll be doing that in another video. So this video is just to talk about the actual definition itself and the actual proof behind L'Hopital's rule. So let's get restarted. So what is L'Hopital's rule? That says that, okay, so let's write, write this down. So for functions, okay, so these have to be functions. So functions f and g, which are differentiable. Okay, so f and, B, f and g have to be differentiable. So if f and g are differentiable, so for functions f and g which are differentiable on an open interval, i, except possibly at some x equals c, so except possibly at x equals c on the interval i suppose we have the following so suppose we have the following okay so suppose we have the following. So suppose we have this. So if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to zero, or plus or minus infinity, and g prime of x does not equal to zero for all x in the interval i with x not equal to c. So this might seem like a very complicated language at first. So all I'm saying is if the limit of f of x and the limit of g of x is equal to zero or plus or minus infinity and the derivative for all x is not equal to zero, then the following holds. So let's see. Uh, so let's keep going. So if the limit um, as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the limit as as x approaches c of g of x equals zero, or plus or minus infinity, and g prime of x is not equal to zero for all x and y, with x equals c, with x not equal to c, and the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x over g prime of x exists then okay so let's go ahead and write this down so what happens if that in that case then i'm saying the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit 
as x approaches c of f prime of x over g prime of x. Okay, so that seems like a very complicated definition. So what the heck I'm actually saying here? So all I'm saying is the following. So this is a, I'm going to put simple, oh, um, let's get erase that for a second. So here's the simple version. So that above was the very formal definition. There's actually more, uh, there's actually two versions of L'Hopital's Rule, aside from that one. One of them is called uh, Macho L'Hopital's Rule, and there's another one called the Extended Edition Version of L'Hopital's Rule, but we don't talk about that in Calculus 1, so we don't have to worry about that. So here's what I'm saying. If the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x approaches 0 over 0, or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity. So if I'm saying, so if the limit as x approaches c of this quotient is equal to zero over zero infinity over infinity, or minus infinity over minus infinity, then this is equal to the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x over g prime of x, provided that these two, provided this limit actually, actually exists. This is this of course assumes that that uh, the limit uh, sorry not the limit this of course assumes that g prime of x cannot equal zero because otherwise we get division by zero and that's undefined so okay so hopefully that should make some sense so this is if you don't understand that definition above using the little bit of a formal language right there all I'm saying is that if the limit as x approaches some point uh, f of x over g of x approaches zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over plus or minus infinity, then we can do this, we can do the exact same limit but with the derivatives instead. And that's it. And we of course assume that this limit doesn't equal zero because otherwise we'd be in trouble. Okay, now why does this work? So let's go ahead and talk about the proof of this theorem. So this is a rather short video. This one I just want to talk about definition per se and kind of mention a few um, situations. Uh, but otherwise, I'll do the examples in the next video. So let's talk about the proof of this theorem. This proof is actually very straightforward and pretty simple. So suppose we have, so let f of c be equal to 0, and let g of c be equal to 0. And suppose, uh, so suppose g prime of c does not equal to zero. So let's just make the make this a bit clear. Okay, so suppose that this is true. Or this holds matter. Okay, so if this is the case, then let's start with the first bit of the proof. So the, the limit as x support is c of f of x over g of x. Okay, well Adding or subtracting zero from a function doesn't affect the actual function itself. So we can rewrite this as the limit x, x approaches c of f of x minus zero over g of x minus zero. This is fine because once again, adding or subtracting zero to for something doesn't change anything. So that's fine. The next part is that, well, we know what zero is. Zero is equal to f of c and g of c. So that's that's great. So we can go ahead and kind of rewrite this a little bit. So we can write this as f of x minus f of c over g of x minus g of c. So this might seem a bit unusual, like why, why are we doing this? Well, here's a little kind of trick I'm going to do. So I notice, I look at this and think, hmm, that looks very similar to the derivative. It's just missing an x minus c. Okay, well, that's that's fine. So, I remember my goal was to kind of arrive at the point where I have derivatives. I have a very similar situation right here, but I mean, it's not quite there yet because the derivative portion is missing. I'm missing, according to the definition of derivative, I need an x minus c on the denominator. I don't quite have that. So, I'm going to go ahead and kind of use this kind of intuition to kind of go ahead with this proof. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to write this as the, the limit as x to c of f of x minus f of c over x minus c. And then I'm going to divide this by g of x minus g of c over x minus c. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and kind of rewrite this a little bit. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches c. Okay, so just I just made that a little bit more clear. Okay, but take a look here. If you kind of use our limit laws to kind of rewrite this, you can rewrite this as the limit as x approaches c of f of x minus f of c all over x minus c. Okay, and then we can divide this by the limit as x approaches c of g of x minus g of c all over x minus c. But this right there is the definition of derivative at a particular point, c. So this is equal to, and the same thing right here, this is equal to the definition of the derivative at x equals c. So as a result, we can kind of rewrite this as f prime of c over g prime of c. But then this can be rewritten as the limit as x approaches c of f of x, or sorry, f prime of x over g prime of x. But this is exactly what L'Hopital's rule is, so we're done with the proof. So not too bad. So as a result, let's kind of let's kind of see what you've done. So at this point, you've done on the left hand side, we had the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x. So that's kind of the proof of why L'Hopital's rule works. There's actually a bit more of a rigorous proof because this isn't technically um, well defined. There's a few things we have to justify about like for why why can we divide and a few other things like that. But I mean, we're not going to go into too much of the nitty gritty proof because that's not really too much required. This was this is just to give you a sense of why it works in the very special cases, which is the kind of cases we'll look at in this course. But Generally, this proof should be sufficient for most cases in calculus one. So hopefully that proof made sense. Now, as I mentioned, this only works if you have zero over zero or infinity over infinity. It won't work if you have something like one to the power of infinity, zero to the power of infinity, infinity minus infinity. It won't work for any of that stuff. As we talked about this briefly a long time ago, and we talked about limits at infinity or infinite limits where we talked about indeterminate forms such as infinity mass infinity, infinity over infinity, things like that. But this is where it kind of becomes important because if it's written in a form that's not zero over zero or infinity plus or minus over plus or minus infinity, then it will be necessary to convert this, this, and this. There's other indeterminate forms, but the main goal is that you're gonna have to be able to convert all of this into one of these forms so this is this becomes it becomes necessary to transform the limit into a form like this if you can't do that L'Hopital's rule cannot be used so it is necessary for L'Hopital's rule to be of this form you cannot have it in any other form otherwise it's just not going to work so as a result that's something we'll talk about in the next video when i do go over several examples of L'Hopital's rule but this video was just, just was just there to give you a sense of what L'Hopital's rule is, why does it work, the proof of the theorem, and the correct form it needs to be for the theorem to work. So hopefully this video made uh, sense. If it did, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if this video helped you. And if you have any questions about my proof, this explanation, or anything else, just leave something in the comments and I'll, I'll be happy to answer. So see you in the next video. Have a great day.